Dr. Rajit, Dr. Jisting to share and discuss uh, on knowledge gap and future research on Malaysia forest soil. Okay, Dr. Rajit Singh uh, is a senior lecturer at Department of Land Management, Faculty of Agriculture, University of Malaysia since 2013. He received his Bachelor in Forestry Science in 2009 and PhD in Forestry for Science in 2012 from Faculty of Forestry, UPM. He pursued his postdoctoral studies at University of Liverpool, United Kingdom, and he was also awarded a Siaka Travel Grant as visiting scholar at the Tokyo University of Agriculture Japan in 2016. He spent six months in the University of Agriculture Science, Bangalore, India in 2019 after being awarded as an Asian India Research Training Fellowship by the Government of India. His research interests include forestry, soil science, forest rehabilitation and also plantation management. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, for our today topic on soil rehabilitation aims to restore productivity to degraded soil, uh, forest soil and focus idea as a part of Operation or a for identifying high priority sites that were degraded in the past in improving quality. So the webinar will also show some insight on the current and future works related to forest soil management. Ladies and gentlemen, without further ado, please welcome Dr. Dajit Singh. Uh, thank you very much, Dr. Oh, Adiba, uh, for the very lovely introduction. I'd like to uh, Say good morning to everyone who's joining us uh, today. I hope everyone is fit as fiddle. So our topic today will be on the uh, uh, the uh, knowledge gaps uh, and uh, some research on uh, Malaysian forest soils. I think Mr. Poitier, to share my slide, please. Yeah, Mr. Poitier, please share your screen. Okay, uh, before uh, we, uh, before we started, I think uh, in Malaysia itself, uh, lately, right, everyone is uh, getting uh, uh, conscious about uh, how that uh, we manage our forest. Uh, I, I I think that's uh, early this year. Uh, there's a lot of uh, how to say uh, photo circulators. Um, evidence shows that some forest deforestations and how does it impact that uh, our environment. Um, so today, uh, besides, uh, I would like to share about uh, the, the importance of soil in uh, forest. We want to see also uh, how does forest contribute to us. Okay, uh, our works not only is about uh, conserving. Our work also is about how to uh, optimize the production also as well of woody and non-woody products uh, from the forest, as uh, apart from the sustainability works we also um we, we want to see also how does this uh, forest management able to help to increase our um, country social and economical uh, benefits as well as generating income so before that let us know also a bit about uh, the type of forest available in malaysia um, audience you can also um you can also uh, from get the information uh, from forestry departments of peninsula malaysia there's about seven to eight type of forest available uh, together with their descriptions i bet many of us here uh, they love to hike uh, they love to uh, do jungle hiking they love to do uh, mountain climbing uh, perhaps maybe you just climb the mountain but you don't know what is the classifications of the forest itself we have uh, ericaceous forest ericaceous and mountain forest we have uh, detrocut forest some categorized as a upper hill and a lowland detrocup. Uh, one thing that we know about detrocup is a uh, home for a high valuable uh, timber as well as uh, other woody and non-woody products uh, like uh, rattan, like bamboos and other uh, shrubs and herbs, for example. Okay, um, if you look uh, if you look like at uh, pit swamp, pit swamp forest is a uh, if I see it's a gum. Um, it's a uh, form from a dead plant, uh, which a uh, dead plant which is not fully decomposed. Okay, it's organic soil, and it's a uh, it's a very unique soil, also uh, for the pit soil in the swamp uh, forest. It's also home for uh, thousands of biodiversity flora and uh, fauna as well. As well. Uh, then uh, we have 
uh, mangrove forest. So this mangrove forest is formed in a muddy area, normally near the coastline, which is the river bank. You, you have low tide and uh, high tide. So in Malaysia, we have uh, one of the best mangrove um, area, which is um, Matang Mangrove Forest Reserve. Uh, it's considered one of the best, I think the best um, management of mangrove forest uh, in the world that are uh, located in uh, Kuala Sepetang. So this is a uh, classification of uh, forest in Malaysia. I look back, uh, no, normally we classify the forest um, apart from the type of species, the type of plants available, it's also related to the elevations. Eh? Elevations, uh, mangrove, elevated swamp, uh, low, lowland deep rock cup, hill deep rock cups, and go up to the upper mountains. So sometimes you go up to like, for example, like Mount Kinabalu, you see that there will be less plant, but there will be more like moss, or the fern. Yeah. So this was from Forest Department of Peninsula Malaysia. And we look back on the uh, Global Forest Resource Assessment 2015. Huh? However, this assessment starts by an, an, in, 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 a, in a 1990 up to 2015. Because uh, there is a decrease in the uh, rate of net forest loss. Shows there's uh, cutting of uh, 50%. But mostly if you see the map, they are focusing more on a third world country, developing country, and also uh, Asian uh, country. But if you look back uh, to 100 years uh, back, then you can see uh, which uh, part of the world they uh, extensively uh, carry out these uh, cons consider logging. But of course, one of the logging, they will do so uh, the uh, reforestation. And we have to know so some forests, we keep it for, uh, we conserve it. Uh, we want to consider biodiversity, but some forest reserve is for production. So every forest, they have uh, their own uh, significant role to play. And uh, based on this FAO, the largest forest loss occur in the tropics, particularly in uh, Africa and uh, South uh, America. Okay, uh, forest area annual chain 1990 to 2015. Okay, uh, what do forests look like? The bulk of the world forest is natural forest. Uh, based on the uh, 2015 planted forest area is about 7% only, but then we have a nature forest about 93%. And in the the shares of planting forest is increasing. Yes, uh, that's right, because we cannot depend anymore just for nature forest to have us. We need to do some things. We need to do some civil culture work. We have to do some replanting work so that the supply will be there um, every time for the regular supply. So in the 1990s, you see the increment from 1990 to 2015 is about one or 2%, from four to 7%. And we still have a lot of uh, natural forest uh, area. The importance of forest. So uh, I bet a lot of uh, conservationists, a lot of uh, a group of people, they understand uh, their fights. Uh, to keep the forest, which should not open the forest, uh, correct? That's, that's right. And first and foremost, it's all about um, climate changes. Think of carbon dioxide. Yeah? The forest, they're able to absorb and store carbon in both above and below ground uh, biomass. If about uh, 2015 uh, per year, is right, uh, 299 gross tonnage carbon can be uh, stored by the forest itself, uh, below and above ground. Second is habitats for biodiversity conservation. The world forest area primarily designated for biodiversity and forest within protected area. And in Malaysia also, uh, later we see the slide, there's an increase also in our uh, permanent forest reserve also, uh, as well. And the third is to provide important uh, environmental so services, protection of soils and water. And currently we are facing climate change, so we are facing something what we call people more concerned right now about food security. A certain country already stopped um, exporting uh, some food supply. Uh, does it really relate to climate change? Are they something that uh, we have to think and we have to see about? And maybe in the future, uh, we need to be more prepared about this. Carbon storage and other cultural spiritual ecosystems. And of course, to sustain the livelihood and economic opportunity. There are many people whose life is depending on the uh, forest harvesting. Uh, this includes like for example like woody and non-woody products some shrubs some herbs some medicinal plants 
where they get it from the uh, forest. And that's also the reason why we need to maintain our uh, forest. We need to do forest. Uh, we need we need to do reforestation. We need to do afforestation. We need to do also rehabilitation. Okay, um, this result is the total size of forested areas in Peninsula Malaysia from 1990 to 2019. So this uh, inform information for 1990s up to 2016, we have uh, obtained it from Malaysian Open Data Portal, while for 2017 and 2018 is uh, obtained from Forestry Departments of Peninsula Malaysia report of 2017 and uh, 18. From the table one that we can see that in 1990, we we'll focus on Peninsula Malaysia, we have around 6.27 million hectares of forested area, which are 4.87 part of the permanent reserve forest, while another 0.83 remain as that land without any reservation uh, status. By 2018, the size of forested area has been reduced by 0.52 million hectares to 5.76 million hectares. However, there's an increment uh, um, in the size of uh, permanent uh, reserve uh, forest. Okay, uh, that's a very in March 2020 is a newspaper cutting from New Straits Times. Very much, a state government urged to increase forested area. If you look back, um, there's a, some st study back in two years showing that actually our forested areas is increasing. Uh, of course, if you consider all plantations as a forest plantation, the number may be increased also. Uh, yeah, the numbers are uh, large because. Some also argue that uh, oil palm plantation is so they have this uh, certification with help also in increasing how to say protecting the biodiversity in the forest itself. Okay, but uh, but they want still people still debate about it. And uh, of course, uh, right now uh, in Peninsula Malaysia, so we have around forty three point forty one percent uh, of our forested area. This is by the Energy and uh, Ministry of Energy and Natural Resources. Uh, they are targeting that a forested area in Peninsula Malaysia to achieve by at least 50% by the year 2040. And you see also right now today, there's a lot of um, planting program being carried out. Uh, that one is maybe for community, but it comes for a uh, big company. So company who uh, rely on this forest how harvesting is very important also for them to do uh, forest uh, replanting also as well. Uh, besides maybe for I think I just said you a bit, uh, bit strange if you heard uh, the words uh, logging because maybe we are too focusing on oil palm plantations. When it comes to forestry, I think logging is kind of a common word. And um, this is a... We are blessed. We are with, uh, to say, a high valuable uh, timber. But again, uh, it's very important for us to see also the impacts of uh, this uh, deforestation whether uh, we be carried out and how do we maintain, how do we know whether our work rehabilitation uh, do restore the conditions of the forest or even the forest soil to its uh, initial state. Okay, um, we look back on the importance of import, important of forest soil. Provide water, nutrients and physical support for the growth of trees and other forest plants. Second, allowing an exchange of carbon dioxide, oxygen, and other gases that affect root growth and soil organisms. We have macro, we have micro, also we have microbe also in the soil. Huh? And also provide substrates for organisms which link with vital ecosystem processes. Decomposition also is one of ecosystem important processes. Harboring root diseases and also other pests, as well as affecting water uh, quantity and uh, quality. Normally, when we talk about root disease and other pests, uh, normally in a natural forest, you don't have any pests. Uh, you don't have any pests, but uh, some implanted forest, in monoculture type, maybe uh, there will be uh, evidence of uh, pests and disease. Okay, uh, forest and wood product for low carbon feature is important, right? Uh, why uh, you, we need to do rehabilitation activities uh, on forest because Energy derived from forest biomass could reduce global emissions eh, by up to 4.4 billion ton of uh, carbon dioxide emission per year. Wood-based uh, ma building materials they avoid emission of 483 million ton carbon emissions and by substituting other materials such as concrete, metal, bricks, and plastic. But I see yeah, in the city, um, 
most of our buildings are from metal bricks, eh? from metal and bricks. Uh, Besides, of course, uh, trees. So uh, the wood, the tree wood is very expensive. And 75% of carbon eh? in the forest is stored in the, not only in the tree biomass and also in the forest litter for, uh, as well. Okay, um, the function of the soil, and I, I believe uh, for those who join today, maybe you want to know, so what is the function, uh, want to understand uh, how important is the soil, for example, whether you're in uh, agriculture sector or engineering sector or even forestry sector, soil is not just about um, uh, providing foundations uh, uh, for human infra infrastructure. And so many people are missing the importance of soil itself. The nutrient for the tree to grow very well, we have to see all the the biological, the chemical processes in the soil. This related on nutrients, uh, nutrient cycles, what else? Huh? Uh, water, uh, water storage in the water, so, uh, in the soil, so itself. And there's a few function of soil. Uh, this information you can get uh, from also food and agriculture organization websites. Huh? They have a lot of infographic um about soil and also forest which is easy for us to teach the uh, to share with the community uh function of soil include water purification and soil contamination reduction climate regulation nutrient cycling habitat for organism flood regulations uh, source of pharmaceutical and genetic resources pro provisions of constructing materials cultural her heritage provisions of food fiber and fuels and as well as carbon sequestration. Huh? So I will highlight on carbon sequestration and climate regulations. Okay, um, like this one, what type of soil degradation that happens? Biodiversity loss, salinization, compaction, uh, pollution, education, and erosion. And drivers of uh, soil degradation, deforestation, urban expansion, pollution and waste disposal, climate change, and as well as unsustainable soil management practice, which is all related to the growth of populations. Of course, there's an improve, improvement uh, in the uh, health sector because uh, our population, world population also increased, there's a demand also of the um, forest uh, products also as well. So that's important for us. Effects of soil degradation, it causes water scarcity, food and nutrition insecurity, rap rapid climate change, poverty, uh, migration. In the worst case, there's a lot of histories. Uh, there's a lot of, if you read the, about the history, how does um, climate change, uh, food, how to say, uh, lack of food, and cause a migration of uh, po human population from one country to another country, and as well as reductions of ecosystem service so to avoid all of this we need to do some uh, sustainable soil management okay apart from the soil governance policy uh, advocates awareness but of course we need to do uh, for for us in this in research sector we will do some survey analysis of the soil conditions and beside my work also when we do success of a type of forest rehabilitation we refer back to the soil quality, so you say. So you want to see whether, and then our benchmark will be the natural forest. Huh? Or we try to get it, uh, how to say, it? can it be the same or can it achieve the same? Or how long does it take? Okay, uh, look back on the, we have one research together with uh, JPSM. Uh, this is on uh, Chikus and Tapahi Forest Reserve located in Perak. So there's the two sites, Chikus Natural Forest, another one is Planted Forest. In Tapahi, we have a secondary forest and also Planted Forest. But for the Chikus Natural Forest, of course, it's a Dithroka and not Dithroka. For the Planted Forest uh, in Chikus, I think uh, the management of the planting, planting is through multi storage uh, forest management. Okay, That project is uh, with JETA. And in Tapa Hill, secondary forest and planted forest through enrichment planting technique. Through enrichment planting technique. Huh? So um, the age of the is about planted forest about 18 years. Uh, 
by that time that I did the, uh, the, the study well, for the planted forest in Tapa Hills, about 48 uh, years already that they started the additional planting work. So over there, you can see the effects of uh, forest rehabilitations uh, along the line. Yeah? Okay, we did it in uh, Pera, state of Pera. Okay, nature forest, and this is nature forest in Chikus. It's on the right, it's multi storage forest management. Uh, domesticants, mostly for uh, multi storage forest management. At first, they're using uh, this Acacia mangium as like a mother, like a shed tolerant tree. No, 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 shed. It, it's like a mother tree, right? To uh, to protect uh, the younger trees of uh, the seeding of Shoro Refusula. Shoro Refusula is a Manti Kemaga. It's a very sensitive plant. It's a shed tolerant. So at very young age, you need some tree to cover up uh, before it can be uh, to allow a successful uh, growth. And I think after three to five years, the people chop off the Acacia mingium and let the uh, tree grow by itself. And enrichment planting, normally the enrichment planting, uh, there's a lot of available tree. But against uh, the plant, the area degraded uh, with the same species or the other species. Okay. Uh, and then secondary forest is a secondary forest without treatment. It just grows like that. And mostly they have uh, pioneer species like um, a lot of like makaranga. Okay, for well, in the research one, so we did uh, some analysis on the physical, chemical, biological properties. Of course, like soil texture, biodiversity, porous, and as well as... Um, the soil texture analysis. Okay, for chemical, we did on moisture, pH, some nutrient contents, as well as mineral composition. And biological, we have uh, we did studies on the pop microbial population, enzymatic activity, as well as uh, microbial biomass, carbon, and nitrogen. So we took for each plot for each plot, uh, uh, we, uh, we we took samples from uh, two depth, but in this study, just focus on the uh, the first depth, uh, the the above depth of 0 to 15 centimeter depth. Okay, um, why we have to do physical, chemical, and biological? Mostly when you do on uh, soil quality, uh, you must have these three elements. Okay, at least there will be a lot of parameters, but uh, you have to choose. Okay, uh, we look back on the Chico's Forest Reserve, huh? especially on the Bad City. Of course, natural forest is considered undisturbed forest. And you look back on, uh, when you look on the planted forest, uh the the particle the bug density is a bit higher and there's a significant difference among it but this is only about 18 years huh? 18 years total carbon for natural forest higher organic matter also higher compared to uh planted forest uh, but biological properties for the top soil you look on the microbial population microbial environmental uh, activity as well as microbial biomass c and and natural forest is uh, higher compared to uh, planted for us. Okay, um, so that is the objective of we do uh, multi storage forest management. Okay, it's to uh, restore the soil conditions. We try to, uh, how to say, we, whether it can achieve or not the same as estimation is the same as the natural forest. But this is just about 18 years, huh? 18 years of works. But right now, if we go back again, this article, maybe there will be increase in the uh, soil quality uh, levels so as well. There will be an improvement. Okay, um, talk about uh, Tapa Hill for a reserve. Both Tapa Hills and Chikus for a reserve is actually con con uh, considered a lowland deep forest. for us. Uh, we can see that planted and secondary forest. Eh? Planted, treat, uh, we consider the forest a given treatment or secondary forest, forest without treatment. Both at uh, site adjacent to each other. You can see there's a bad density in the planted forest is uh, lower, moisture content also higher, porosity also uh, higher compared to secondary forest. Talk about uh, carbon, nitrogen, organic matter is also significantly higher in uh, uh, planted forest of Tapa Hill. Uh, like what just now in Chikus, the multi story forest management, because I did study, I think around in uh, 2012. It's about 18 years. But for plant for Tapa Hill for Reserve, the enrichment planting work already started back in the 1960s. 1960. And then you can see so there's a, a big difference eh, compared to forest treated, been treated with uh, forest proper 
a rehabilitation program as well as forest without uh, just naturally uh, grow by itself. Uh, biological properties also uh, you look on the uh, microbial populations as well as uh, microbial act I mean, activity and m microbial biomassy and n is higher in planted forest okay that is uh, what what uh, studies that we carry out yeah, in uh, one of our uh, malaysians uh, forest rehabilitation site so I'd like to share a bit of the studies that i have carry out uh, in uh, Park Brook Blackburns in UK on the river ribble. So over here is where actually we try to detect uh, the source of pollutions in water. So the study is carried out in a catchment area in the Blackburn. Catchment area is sounds like watershed area also as well. Okay, um, source of the uh, source of the pollutions that we detect is mostly from pasture because uh, in, 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 in UK there's a lot of pasture. Uh, pasture land, channel bank, rot verge, and uh, rot dust. Even though the, the study normally uh, what we do, we try to compare, we try to compare and see the, how does the, we try to improve the current uh, tracer elements uh, selections. Yeah? Solid uh, tracer element for catchment, sediment, fingerprinting. Okay, so this is the area of Blackburn. Uh, so we collect some spot, uh, we collect samples, uh, mostly if for river bank, uh, channel banks and pasture, we just scrap uh, on the surface of the soil or on the side of the channel banks. Uh, so mostly a zero to two uh, centimeter depth only. And then we also collect uh, dust from uh, the road, the road side as well as road verge. Because uh, there's a evidence uh, of some Evidence of heavy metals available in the water. Okay, there will be foresight. Some analysis that we do is using uh, XRF, call out radionuclides, low frequency magnetic susceptibility, a uh, grain size, and also as well as organic material. So most of the studies, I think, are not really into chemicals, but mostly on a physical uh, sciences. Uh, how, that's why they're using XRF, huh? XRF spectrometer. Of course, it, it gave a set of data, but the sample is non-destructive because they only measure it uh, using uh, things of light, like a uh, spectrophotometer. And the same sample also can be used uh, to analyze, to look, uh, to analyze for magnetics as, uh, as well as grain size and also uh, OM. But however, one thing that we like to see is over here. Um, after we collected uh, the soil samples on the road side, on, on, on the surface, we also put some tubes uh, uh, in the in the river banks, in the river itself, to collect uh, all the sediments available. And we're targeting, uh, we grind our soil samples up to 63 microns, uh, because that is that's considered the size of the sediment transport uh, in the uh, water and of course there will be mixture for tracer a tracer b tracer, uh, tracer d uh, but one thing that uh, we can see is there is a evidence of um, but mostly samples that have a high heavy metal content which is from the rot dust or rot verge it's not from uh, the pastures of or channel bank actually okay mostly or channel bank the source how how the soil and the sediments can be in the water, it can be due to the uh, erosions at the channel bank as well as the animal trampling on it. And that time uh, we only have, we try to also uh, collect samples from winter wheat area, but I think they're not they start, um, the plantings of our winter wheat. So uh, we exclude it from our uh, study. Okay, uh, Tracer, uh, one thing that uh, this, this is shows that uh, principal components of uh, tracer selected, which are uh, based on four different uh, criteria, which is tra uh, tracer A, tracer B, tracer C, tra uh, tracer uh, D. However, this is to uh, update on the current, how to say, um, sediment fingerprinting uh, techniques. But there's uh, many uh, techniques that you can use. 
However, the main thing for this study that we uh, we can use it also here to uh, to look. We want to how to say uh, we want to identify uh, the main pollutants available in our soil as well as uh, water. So based on the XRF, right? There's a lot of analysis that um, XRF as well as the gamma spectrophotometry studies, the follow radionuclide. There's a lot of elements that uh, we can get. Okay, um, that's on the research tree. Uh, this is, uh, I think I, I talked a lot about this, uh, this uh, rehabilitation project. This is in, in uh, uh, for Sungai Beti for Reserve or Lodging, uh, the, uh, which is JPSM, uh, Jabatan uh, Forestry Department of Peninsula, Peninsula Malaysia. In Kelantan also, they carry out this uh, rehabilitation activ activities on regaded soils. Huh? They plant it using uh, eucalyptus tree. Actually, one thing that I like about eucalyptus is fast growing. Uh, right now in the current situation it's best to use uh any trees that especially it must uh how to say fix your objective of your forest rehabilitation activity yeah okay. activity if you, in 2017 and in uh, 2009 if you're going um tree looks good and eucalyptus is the timbers of the future okay uh timbers of the future the export of eucalyptus timber uh, last year, this is based on uh, 2020, it recorded 3 billion for the last six months, the value hub because of uh, COVID-19 pandemic. And I believe um, the demand for this tree also will increase. So there's some people say, every time they have apply a uh, grant or what, they say this tree have no economical value. I, I believe that um, it's very important for that person so to understand uh to look broader about okay the potentials of every uh, tree but because uh in forest trees right uh, eucalyptus tree so what right, not only for just wood chip also for paper that we use every day oils essential oils yeah for example Okay, uh, average growth, but this one only we look in, in the ja January 2018 up to August is about six to, uh, to eight months. And you see there's an increment for plot one, plot two, and plot three. So in case, but right now, I think if, if, if we go back to the area, it, it, uh, it should be um, a better growth huh, compared to uh, before. And besides, in UPM also, we have uh, stations over here which uh, area in inside college area that we plant with uh, eucalyptus tree. Okay, uh, look back, at, back on the soil pH itself. When we do soil studies in the forest or what, first thing that we need to do, normally we have to understand what is the soil pH all about. Huh? But the pH range for plot 1, plot 2, is about 5.3 up to uh, 5.5. And you see there's a difference, an uh, increment in terms of pH. Um, levels from October, uh, October 17 up to October uh, August 18 about a year o October 17 I think the three they just planted so we also collect some samples as well as carbon uh, there's a bit how to say a diff yes carbon but plot one August October 17 is a bit lower compared to the um, in August 18 but Right now, you go back and uh, so there should be an improvement in terms of carbon. Yeah. So it's a good also, these trees can help favorable for uh, rehabilitation activity as well as uh, stop carbon emissions huh, in, the, uh, in the atmosphere. Okay, total nitrogen, October 17, 18. Uh, we see there's a difference, but uh, the increment is a bit low. Uh, sorry, sorry, the increment for plot two, plot three is higher compared to uh, plot one. So you see, there's the improvement. Uh, at your extent capacity also, there's improvements uh, once we do the rehabilitation activity. You want to use the word replanting also? Okay, it can improve your uh, soil uh, quality. Okay, um, the challenge uh, uh, remains is like um, the Something told that the forest continue to decline as human population continue to grow and demand for loot, uh, for food and uh, land increases. Uh, right back in the 1990s, 0 0.8 hectares per person. So we need trees area, 0 0.8 hectares per person. While in the 2015, the size reduced to 0 0.6 hectares per person. 
but I believe that uh, the awareness of the importance of forest rehabilitation increase. <coughs> Apart from that also, we want to stop all these natural disasters like landslides, uh, like uh, drought. It's all related to also forest rehabilitation and soil itself. Are you a soil degraded due to forest openings? Uh, we, have, we are in, in big trouble. Huh? Okay, government, private companies, community, civil society, international organization, they also must adopt policies and invest in sustainable forest management. Um, I believe in uh, Malaysia, I think there's a lot of investment huh, on uh, forest management system needs to be she and besides, we also have a lot of uh, replanting auto activities. And the awareness is not only amongst uh, the adults, but also among the kids and also the youth. Okay. Um, to understand more, how do you, uh, I think FAO also provide this kind of uh, sustainable forest management toolbox. It's uh, for free user friendly, uh, designed to meet the diverse need of sustainable forest management practitioner, particularly for those who are working the forest management uh, level. So over here, there's a lot of guideline, uh, guideline that uh, they provide a simple knowledge or some tools, how you can understand the thematic areas that you're interested so uh, about uh, forest itself. Some people are in, uh, interested in policy. Some people are interested uh, about on the science part of it. It can be governance, food security, livelihoods, people, climate change, products, landscape, government, and others. Huh? Okay. Um, okay. Uh, current research in forest soils. Huh? So current research in forest soils, if you look by, in, um, online, of course, people right now are interested in how uh, on genomic studies. Right now, people will go for genomic studies how to conserve uh, the forest, high valuable and endangered species. It can be flora, it can be fauna. And also soil also, that looks also into a, uh, um, because right now forest soil also is a home for a lot of, why, why? because they are very valuable uh, uh, nature resources, as well as like a mineral also as well. Effects of harvesting pra practices on soil sustainability, effect of air pollution, effect of climate change on forest soil, identification of soil quality indicators, uh, forest sustainability. And besides in UPM also, we do, um, we try, uh, we are providing also uh, ser services for the community, for everyone who want to know how you can understand your soil very well through publication or through clusters or through seminar also uh, as well. And uh, as well as uh, investigating the on biological parts of the soil and also application of wood ash to forest and for upcoming research projects so this is uh, our project together uh, with uh, department of forestry peninsula malaysia i think uh, for terengganu uh, we secure a grant uh, from uh, ketsa to studies on assessing the distribution climatic conditions soil fertility and genetic variation of highly endangered species of timber species in the forest reserve of uh, Trentanu. So I think we will start the project uh, in uh, in July. So the main things of this project is also we want to provide a publication, also extension services for the local community as well as uh, internationals, uh, people who are interested to know about our uh, forest management huh, in one of the states. Okay, uh, for those who want to understand more, maybe you are, maybe some don't get how the importance of forest and soil is there. Maybe you can watch, I like to suggest this kind of movie. This No, this is an animated movies huh, on the Lorax. It's about 10 years ago. It's talk about how important is the forest. And besides, in the movie, everyone has to buy their oxygen to breathe. So I think uh, it's a very good uh, exposure and also awareness on the importance of uh forest replanting activity okay um that's all for me so is there any questions i'll be happy to answer or any comment also as well thank you very much okay thank you dr Rajit, for very informative and interesting sharing so now i open the floor for question so first question from uh prof Sudin yusuf okay the recent rush of uh, nature in Hulangat, landslides and soil erosion. What was the immediate cause of the calamity? 
was it deforestation of natural phenomenon is climate change beyond our control okay, Dr. Rajit. all right thank you Rosham, for the question i but i think okay i think for the hulu alangat area landslide is uh it's a hilly area so i think hilly areas is considered as a sensitive area so i'm not sure how the vegetation works on that on that area it might be due uh to maybe i i'm not sure but maybe due to the structures of soil itself is not that strong maybe there's lack of uh trees but climate change i'm not really sure about that okay okay we go to next question from dr christopher so our head of department so what do you think is the adoption level of restoration practices and participation in restoration effort in malaysia all right okay um uh land and forest also i think is a, is a state matter for example uh, we can see uh, some states right uh, they actively do um, replanting activity mostly like for a reserve itself we have a forest reserve for permanent uh, how to say permanent to conserve the forest itself or the biodiversity and we also have a forest reserve which is for production so this production we will harvest and instantly we'll replanting again so this is considered like we saw uh deforestation uh we call it uh, also a uh, forestation but there's some area uh, maybe you, uh, we see that lack of restore uh, restoration maybe they will need the people to how to say um to observe the works of harvesting as well as also replanting activity uh, some said they're able once they chop down a tree they strictly do the replanting i think the method should be the same like what we do in oil palm plantation or so as well uh, but yeah sometimes this thing happen also as well but uh, on the part of restoration activities i think um, we consider we are very active do it and besides there's the interest right now and a lot of information that we can get also i think from uh, the jpsn website as well as stream to do thank you dr chris all right next question also from dr chris how do you reconcile forest preservation and increasing world of food demand and food insecurity okay how do you consider forest preservation and increase wood uh demand and food security last time there's a word in agriculture we call it inter integrated farming where right now the most famous word is the agroforestry the agroforestry apart from uh, forestry products so you uh, part of forestry species you incorporate also um these uh, agriculture uh, crops uh, it, it doesn't mean that it must be planted alternately but it can be planted in the same uh, area of course one thing right, when it comes to climate change the changes of the uh, weather the carbon emissions so you need to plant more trees or what right, so that it does not affect your uh, crop production especially like ad or wheat for example like for me like in india i think um, right now it comes to climate change of course india have a hotter weather so that's why i think there's a stop that, that that's how to say um they have to make sure there's enough uh, food supply for uh their own citizens well. but again if we can uh, choose the right trees uh to sustain uh, the food uh, the world food demand i think we can also can sustain the food security so the food security right is not only on the policy side we also have to understand also uh, how does it work also uh, in how to say in a scientific view okay thank you dr rajit so we is there any more question So I think there's no more question. So okay. So with that, we have come to the end of uh, JPTH community webinar. So <clears throat> I think you all, I thank you all for participating in this webinar. Thank you for Dr. Najib for your very uh, informative and uh, sharing knowledge. So see you all in the next series. Please visit our department website for latest information. Uh, have a nice day all. Have a nice weekend.